Hamilton residents are being invited to roll up their sleeves and help out as the city updates its comprehensive plan over the next year. Hamilton's current comprehensive plan was completed in 2015. And there's been a lot of changes since then, especially when it comes to planning for the growth to come and providing affordable housing. Other points to be considered in a new plan are traffic, community vision and values, and future opportunities. The city has a new website, envisionhamilton.com, which provides background information, ways to get involved in planning processes, tag a map, and share photos. So there's going to be a variety of different engagement opportunities from the digital side on the website, but also a lot of in-person engagement opportunities as well. So next week kind of is the, is the kickoff week. We're having a series of coffee talks on the 14th and 15th through around town that people can just show up at or RSVP for, and that's all through the website. But there's going to be plenty of opportunities throughout the next year to, to get out there and make your voice heard. And there's a questionnaire on the website that asks residents about their visions and values as the planning process gets underway. And the weekend is almost underway. How about it, Lewis? What are we looking at? Yeah, Mike, we're looking at a hot weekend ahead of us. All right, temperatures are going to be in the 80s and low 90s today. Mid upper 90s then quickly return Saturday and Sunday. So we'll get those details throughout the morning. First, we hit 91 yesterday in Missoula. That is 12 straight days now that we've hit at least 90 degrees in Missoula. Looks like we'll see that again today. We're going with a high of 90 in Missoula. So right on that edge and then after that, like I mentioned, warming it up big time Saturday and into Sunday. 88 yesterday in Kalispell. That's eight degrees above our average of normally sitting at about 80 this time of year. 50s, low 60s across western Montana this morning. Now we are seeing some clouds overhead and we can't rule out a few rain showers, maybe even a few thunderstorms this morning too, specifically west central and northwest Montana. Now these aren't going to be widespread. We're not going to see a lot of storm activity, but we are even seeing a few lightning strikes here for parts of uh, the Flathead in Mission Valley. You can see that lightning strike there just east of Flathead Lake. So we are looking at those scattered showers this morning and then skies generally clear for the remainder of the day with a lot of sunshine this afternoon. So again, west central northwest Montana, maybe a rain shower, maybe an isolated thunderstorm during the morning, then sunshine 80s and 90s later on into the day. West central southwest Montana, or I should say more southwest Montana, drier conditions expected. Maybe some clouds this morning and then a lot of sunshine with highs generally in the mid to upper 80s by the afternoon. Tonight we drop those lows down mostly into the 50s overall, looking at a pretty nice Friday evening ahead of us. Missoula 90 today, 98 Saturday, Sunday, and we keep those temperatures in the 90s as we move into next week as high pressure remains firmly overhead, keeping us very warm and very dry across the northern Rockies. 87 for that high today in Kalispell. Can't rule out a thunderstorm or a rain shower this morning. 90 Saturday, Sunday, and we keep our temperatures in the upper 80s to lower 90s into next week. Hamilton 86 Friday, 95 Saturday, Sunday, 91 Monday with upper 80s and lower 90s continuing through the week. Coming up next, the environmental cleanup of Butte continues when Montana this morning continues next. From MTN News, you're watching Montana this morning. It's coming up on 5:11. Welcome back. The mining that Butte has seen for more than a century has caused a myriad of problems, and as John Amy reports, one cleanup effort is continuing. Haul trucks have started removing tons of contaminated dirt from this site off of Civic Center Road in Butte to prevent heavy metals from seeping into groundwater that could be harmful to aquatic life. The contaminated material gets hauled over here and dumped um, by the by the state and the state's contractors, and then uh, then MR comes uh, on our night shift and picks this material up and hauls it to uh, a dump. We dispose of it. Essentially, we're being the repository for the bad material. The material, known as the parrot tailings, is a century's worth of smelter waste that had been buried in this area of Butte. This state-funded project 
will also take contaminated groundwater from the site where it will be treated at Montana Resources property before being pumped into Silverbow Creek along with treated water from the Berkeley pit. We've discharged up, uh, you know, we're coming up on about four billion gallons discharged to Silverbow Creek. So, yeah, a billion with a B. The state contracted crew is moving dirt from Civic Center Road onto the Montana Resources property. Meanwhile, Montana Resources continues its regular mining operations. So safety is a priority. Anytime you do something that's out of the routine, that's where, that's where you have a higher risk. So. You know, like I said, these guys are really good to work with. They're very safety conscious, as you know, just like us. And this is just one of the many ways that Montana Resources is trying to help in the reclamation process after Butte has suffered over a century's worth of contamination. Having a mine in the middle of a community has, you know, we, you know, has its its drawbacks. You know, we. We got the noise, we got the light, we got the dust, we got this kind of stuff. So any opportunity we see to try and pay back, you know, those those negative things with some positive things, we, we really like to do that. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. All right, and finally made it to Friday here. We got the weekend ahead of us. Uh, it's going to be hot and dry this weekend, but we could see a few thunderstorms this morning. You see that laid out here in our superior forecast for the Friday. Those details coming up. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Lewis Dorch. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Montana this morning. Before we get those weather details, let's go ahead and take a look at a picture. Rachel sent this in yesterday. She was hiking Ward Mountain, got the sunrise, beautiful shot, had the wildflowers out as well. Rachel, thank you for sharing this picture with us, everyone. Please continue to send those photos in. We've got a lot to get to, and we'll do that throughout the morning here. Can't rule out a few showers, maybe a few thunderstorms across west central and northwest Montana this morning. Not widespread, but you can see we have a weak system moving through. Even a few thunderstorms, a few lightning strikes here for areas just east of the Flathead Valley. Valley east of Flathead Lake as well. So we can't rule out a few of these developing and then by the afternoon all this clears out and we're looking at a lot of sunshine. So let's time out the next couple days, your Friday and your weekend here. Future track satellite and radar model doing a good job of showing those scattered showers again, primarily west central northwest Montana this morning. Those will linger, we'll say through around 8 a.m., maybe even uh, go at through 9 a.m. But then after that, Everything slides off to the east. We get more sunshine by the afternoon, 80s, low 90s for today. Then for the weekend, high pressure right over top of us. It's going to be hot out there. We're talking about temperatures well up into the 90s, even pushing hundreds for areas in Idaho. The one thing that we could see is some smoke and haze make a return to the forecast with those wildfires really taking off for some areas in Idaho in eastern Washington there. So it's going to be hot, but we could see those hazy skies too. Same setup on Sunday, temperatures well into the 90s. So that's laid out for you here in the seven day. 90 today in Missoula, 98 Saturday, Sunday, and those temperatures remain in the 90s through next week. Kalispell, 87 on your Friday here, 93 Saturday, Sunday, 88 Monday and Tuesday, and Hamilton will go with the 86 on your Friday for temperatures quickly warm up and return to the mid 90s by the weekend. Well, we're finally able to travel again, and for a lot of people, that means hopping on a plane and heading to Montana, say. Well, tourists can get here, but best of luck finding a rental car, as the supply chain has thrown a wrench into the demand for vehicles. MTN's Megan Mannering lays out the shortage of rental cars and how you might be able to work around it. We have tons of people moving to this area and tons of people vacationing here. It's out of state and they're desperate. Um, the airport is out of rentals until August. Big sky country, the last best place, the treasure state. Can you really blame tourists for wanting to visit Montana? No, but that doesn't make it any less frustrating when you try to book a rental car and there's nothing available. So we have a car shortage across the nation and the rental car companies aren't getting the numbers into their fleet that they normally do. According to local car dealerships, the problem began when COVID put an end to travel plans last year. Car rental reservations were canceled, employees laid off, and companies forced to downsize their fleets. 
Now, as the country reopens and families reschedule those vacations, fishing trips and glacier excursions, the car rental biz is feeling the pressure. So there's a huge, huge demand and a really, really small supply. The traditional car rental business may not get you on the road this summer, but there are alternatives stepping up to the plate. We have 30 rental cars right now and we're our plans to put in about 20 more. Nissan dealerships in Missoula and Kalispell both predicted the shortage in car rentals, so they've begun renting out their own fleets something they've done on a much smaller scale for many years. What, we, what we've always done is Nissan, the, the manufacturer, has had an opportunity for us to rent vehicles. And normally we keep a small fleet to rent to customers who have their car in the shop or in service or getting a warranty repair or something like that. So this is a program that Nissan's had for a long time. Nissan of Missoula and Kalispell both jumped at the opportunity to expand their rentals to retail, a facet of business that's bound to stick around and one that other dealerships might try. I've gotten a couple phone calls um, from dealers and they're asking what we're doing because they, they have heard about it. And we saw an opportunity to kind of expand that program and grow it a little bit to help our community and to help the, the tourism industry here, really. In addition to dealership rentals, a new company called Turo allows private car owners to rent out their vehicles. Similar to the Airbnb business model, customers can download the Turo app, search their desired location, and choose from local renters, most vehicles going for about 150 per day. So whether you're itching to mark Montana off the bucket list or you're a local, a new way of renting may be the only way to travel the Treasure State this summer. And even if the car rentals catch up to the demand... I, I think our tourism is here, here to stay, I really do. In Missoula, Megan Mannering, MTN News. Another avenue tourists who can't find rental cars are taking, U-Hauls. U-Haul in Missoula confirmed they've seen customers renting box trucks for days at a time to tour the state. Might not be the most comfortable option or fuel efficient, but an option nonetheless. All right, well, Lewis, I have to mm -hmm. tell you the personal story here. Um, you know, my wife and I tried to find a rental car for about a month or so, couldn't okay. find anything. Eventually, we found one in Butte, but the price was twice as much as it would have taken us to fly. Oh, and really? so that's what we ended up doing. So, I, you know, that's just one of the pandemic after effects, I guess. Yeah, you know, uh, we're going back or I have plans to go back to North Carolina in September to see some family. I was looking at a rental car in North Carolina and this was uh, about a couple weeks ago, Mike. So we're still several months out. Uh, there were zero rental cars in North yeah. Carolina where we were going. So I'm like, man, if you're going to rent one like they're saying there, get on it early. Get all right, yeah. thank you, Lewis. All right, well, following the Ag Report, Operation Shelter struggles to find answers in Missoula. And let's head to Charlotte, North Carolina, the Queen City. Really a spectacular shot right there. And we'll be right back. Now, here's your Farm and Ranch Report from the Montana Ag Network. Hi, everybody. It's time for your Farm and Ranch news. Well fueled by some impressive growth in a wide range of destinations, U.S. beef and pork export values shattered previous records in May. That's according to some new data just released by USDA and compiled by the U.S. Meat Export Federation. Now beef exports also reached a new volume high in May while pork export volume was the third largest on record. USMEF President and CEO Dan Hallstrom says that the outstanding May performance is especially gratifying when you consider where red meat exports stood one year ago. Now, beef exports in May were driven by record large exports to South Korea, continued growth in China, and a strong rebound in both Japan and Taiwan. By the way, May exports of U.S. lamb were also the highest of 2021, led by larger shipments there to Mexico and the Caribbean. In some other news today, in response to a federal register notice on supply chains in agricultural production, the American Sheep Industry Association recently offered comments calling for support from the USDA for increased access to lamb processing across the United States. Of course, the problem was highlighted with the closing of the Mountain State's Rosen plant last year, and even the addition of two new plants in the past year has failed, they say, to completely right the ship in the lamb packing industry. 
ASI says grants and guaranteed loans to these small and mid-sized facilities to invest in fabrication facilities and encourage the entry of additional packing entities would be tremendously helpful in enhancing the geographic distribution of the industry's infrastructure. Stay with us. We'll have more Ag News right after this. Well, the Montana Department of Livestock is asking residents to remain vigilant about the presence of feral swine. Although there have been no confirmed sightings in Montana, populations they say are spreading and the risk of introduction is high. For most Montana producers, kind of the concerns um, around feral swine have to do with either destruction of resources, so crops, um, pastures, whatever they might be, or the fact that feral swine can carry um, some significant diseases that can impact our, our domestic lab, wildlife species. Um, so those would probably be the two things that we hear specific to um, livestock producers in Montana. Certainly, you know, the scope of destruction or damage that feral swine are capable of inflicting spreads well beyond just the livestock industry. She says even though Montana law permits a private landowner to eradicate feral swine on their land, they're asked to report the sightings because of the challenge of successfully eradicating the entire group. So the way that the current law is written, it does allow for a landowner that finds feral swine on their property to shoot those animals if they're concerned about imminent damage that, that swine may cause. We would ask producers to, to reconsider whether they shoot first and then call us or whether they call us directly to report them for a couple of reasons. I think most commonly you may see three or four pigs, but they may be part of a larger group. So you won't effectively get rid of all of them. Now the biggest risk of introduction to Montana is feral swine crossing the border from Canada. Now keep in mind reports can be directed to the Squeal on Pigs hotline at 406 444-2976. That's a look at your farm and ranch news. Have a great day. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Welcome back to Montana This Morning for our second half an hour coming up on 530. I'm Mike Powers and again a lot of news to get to. Fire information, what's Missoula going to do about its homeless population, uh, some of the stories that we'll be following, but the weather's a big story as well, especially now that we're We'll just say the weekend started. We're starting it right now. Oh, we're starting the weekend. Like, I'm already in weekend mode. Like, it happens. It happens as soon as, like, as soon as you kind of get into that Friday, I'm already thinking about the weekend. Yeah, actually, for already, sure. Actually, I'm already thinking about the weekend on Monday. Who are we joking about? <laughs> yeah. Like, you try to get Well, you quick. have to because you put up the seven day, and so we see the weekend. Exactly. Right? So that's your job. Exactly. It's going to be hot. Like, actually, so we hit 91 yesterday in Missoula. That's giving us 12 straight days of at least 90 degrees. The okay. record in Missoula. I was going to ask you that. Yeah, the record is 20 straight days right, set so back we... in 1904. Here's the thing, though, Mike. If we can get through today, our high temperature is 90. It's today right, on the, right yeah. on the cusp. If we hit that 90 degree mark, I think we have a really good chance of either tying that or breaking it because we're going to heat it up by the weekend and continue into next week. It's not so. a record I want. No, it's I'm one sorry, of those. Exactly. Not. It's not one of those records that you're super pumped about though. hitting or breaking. Yeah. yeah. So we'll kind of see how it sh uh, plays out. But either way, hot weather might continues. Okay. We have a few thunderstorm chances today as well. That's generally in the mornings. All right. So this morning we're already seeing a few showers, a few thunderstorms developing. And then after these move through, a lot of sunshine is expected later on into the afternoon and evening. And this hot weather continues into the weekend. We're going to be pushing that 100 degree mark in many locations. Smoke and haze possible through the weekend as well. So again, all these details as we roll throughout the morning. Missoula 61, about a 30% chance of a thunderstorm this morning. And then you can see those skies clear during the afternoon. Same setup for Kalispell here. High temperatures are going to be in the mid to upper 80s. For Hamilton, we'll start the day off in the 60s and the day then in the upper 80s all the details coming up
Missoula officials are asking for the public's input on how to reduce the number of people camping illegally in town. It's a problem, they say, that has grown out of the housing crunch and from COVID-19, which forced shelters to accept fewer people. Missoula leaders say the most recent numbers show 400 people experiencing homelessness in the city, but some anecdotal estimates place that number as high as 1,000. And the issue has seen strong reaction with the removal of people who were camping illegally on the West Broadway Island just a few weeks ago. It's not the first time Missoula officials have cleared out homeless camps and they say it won't be the last. It is a problem city officials say has grown from that housing crunch for sure. MTN's Katie Miller continues our coverage. Uh, not an option. As Missoula's homeless population continues to grow, city and county leaders say they'll soon enforce trespassing laws and stop allowing people to camp illegally. We are endeavoring here to make uh, order out of out of chaos. On Thursday, Missoula Mayor John Ingen and the Missoula County Commissioners heard recommendations for shelter plans for Missoula's homeless. Our hope here is to provide people with alternatives, offer them an alternative place to live that is legal, safe, secure, and then let them know they can no longer camp illegally where they are. The Office of Emergency Management says it's surveyed 21 different site locations and has narrowed it down to three recommendations. The resources on site will vary depending on how close the people staying there are to attaining permanent housing. There is no single site that is suited to address the needs of the current or expected unsheltered population. Option one, use the former sleepy inn for temporary transitional housing. Option two, construct a clean camping spot at the end of Clark Fork Lane. Option three, design a hard sided outdoor shelter near the cemetery on North Russell. Mayor Ingen says he knows future decisions might be controversial. We'll do uh, outreach to uh, to neighbors with regard to whatever decisions we uh, we uh, settle on, um, and uh, and do our best to mitigate um, impacts and unintended consequences. In Missoula, Katie Miller, MTN News. Now is the time to reach out to the city and county with questions and public comment. You can email solutions at missoulacounty.us. The thunderstorms that moved across western Montana on Wednesday sparked several fires, especially in the Lolo National Forest. The West Lolo Complex fire is burning near Superior and Plains. A Type 1 incident management team took over last night as the fire grew to more than 220 acres. Air resources, smoke jumpers, ground crews are already working it. Managers say they expect even more fires to emerge in the coming days due to the hot weather and drying fuels. The western portion of the fire, which includes the Superior and Plains Thompson Falls Ranger districts, experienced the most lightning activity. Pfizer says it's now ramping up efforts to roll out a COVID-19 booster shot to help increase immunity for COVID-19. And it is working on a newer ver version of its vaccine to target the fast spreading Delta variant. That comes as the CDC director says more than 9 million Americans now live in parts of the country where COVID hospitalizations and deaths are spiking significantly among people who have not been vaccinated. Now in Tokyo, a COVID emergency has forced Olympic officials to ban spectators at events held in Japan's capital. The summer games are set to begin in two weeks after being postponed last year because of the pandemic. Let's head to the Weather Center now and meteorologist Lewis Dorch. All right, thank you, Mike. Good morning, everyone. So a quick look at our air quality. A lot better this morning than what we were seeing yesterday morning. Pretty smoky and hazy out there. So a lot of our air quality right now, what it has to do is the wind direction because the fires that we have in Montana, not huge at this point, right? But moving to Idaho, eastern Washington, that's where we have some bigger fires burning. So the wind direction plays a big role on what our uh, air quality is going to be. So this morning, generally, good moderate air quality around Hamilton and Frenchtown, but again, not as bad as what it was yesterday. So what we're looking at is the main uh, contribution from where the smoke's coming from is near the Di or the Dixie fire in Idaho here. Now, yesterday it had a uh, report of around 11,000 acres is what it was up to, and a lot of that smoke will then ride into specifically west central and southwest Montana. Again, though, this is all based on the winds. Today, it looks like the winds out of the northwest should keep a lot of the smoke out of here by the weekend as high pressure builds 
we could see some of that smoke kind of push back in. So just kind of something to watch as we move throughout the weekend. Notice on our radar here, a few showers and thunderstorms popping up, primarily west central and northwest Montana. Not a lot of rain with these. A weak system is moving through, but notice as you head just east of Kalispell, we've had a few lightning strikes popping up here. Not a lot. We okay, see this move through, and then once it does, skies clear, a lot of sunshine for today. So it is the weekend. Maybe a plan you're going to get out and head to one of our national parks. Here's that West Glacier forecast. Can't rule out maybe a thunderstorm this morning, then 90s. But like we talked about, it could be hazy at times this weekend. Just kind of watching that smoke and how it develops. Uh, West Yellowstone's forecast for the weekend. Overall, nice, warm, a lot of sunshine, 80s and low 90s out there. High temperatures today, 80s, low 90s across northwest Montana for the most part. Again, some storms this morning with clearing skies by the afternoon. We'll see more sunshine for areas down in southwest Montana. Seven day forecast shows 90s sticking around for Missoula. Hot this weekend, 98 Saturday and Sunday. Kalispell, 87 today, 90s in return as we move into the weekend and Hamilton, 86 Friday, 95 then Saturday and Sunday. All right, Lewis, thank you. Well, coming up as we continue this half hour of Montana this morning is Northwest Energy asking for too much and this. I'm Dennis Bragg in Missoula. Senator Tester says a lot more of this activity and a lot more jobs if the big infrastructure package is approved. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. If there's one word that encompasses everything from jobs to broadband, internet to sidewalks, Senator John Tester says it's infrastructure. All of those things are part of a bipartisan package worth as much as $1.2 trillion. Aside from improvements, the deal is estimated to help create hundreds of jobs in the Missoula area alone. Now, that's part of the reason why Senator Tester hopes Montanans jump on board to help get the deal approved, as MTN's Dennis Bragg explains. With the $16 million rebuild on the Bear Tracks Bridge underway in the background, Senator Tester came to Missoula to stump for the infrastructure package, the sounds of construction symbolic of the work that went into crafting the legislation. It will provide significant investment in Montana's roads, bridges, airports, water infrastructure. It will also uh, make uh, badly needed investments in broadband, uh, which we found out was so critically important during the pandemic. Tester is one of 10 senators, five from each party, that developed the deal, which includes about $579 billion in new spending without using a gas tax. Others joined the Big Sandy Democrat to emphasize how important that will be to not just fixing stuff, but creating well-paying jobs. America's on the move. And let me tell you, just like you can see around Missoula, all the traffic, this bill is needed to keep Americans and Montanans moving safely throughout the United States and throughout Montana. If we talk infrastructure, it creates thousands and hundreds of jobs um, throughout the area. So for the airport, it's just, it's big. Um, we're a leading tourism for the state as far as bringing people into the community. Missoula City Councilman Jordan Hess says there hasn't been much federal investment in infrastructure projects, and he says the millions of dollars that could come from this bill would help municipalities catch up on a backlog of work. How big of a backlog? Missoula estimates there's at least a quarter of a billion dollars worth of projects that need attention. That's not pie in the sky uh, wish list infrastructure. That is nuts and bolts, um, streets, sidewalks, utility lines, um, the things that make our cities function. This is truly a once in a century investment in infrastructure in this country. It will be one of the most impactful non-emergency bills uh, once it's passed in this nation's history. In Missoula, Dennis Bragg, MTN News. Tester believes Senator Chuck Schumer could bring the infrastructure package to the floor as soon as July 19th. He's hoping that happens in order to capture at least some construction projects during this season. All right, thank you, Mike. And coming up here just after the break, we'll get the details on that weekend forecast for St. Ignatius today. We're looking at uh, temperatures in the 90s or 80s to low 90s by the afternoon, but a few thunderstorms during the morning with details coming up. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Lewis Dorch. 
Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Montana. This morning, start us off with a photo. Shirley sent us in this picture yesterday, hanging out at Lake Como. Nice uh, picture right here. Shirley, thank you so much for sharing this photo with us. Everyone, please keep those pictures coming. We got a lot of photos to get to, and we'll do that throughout the morning here. Uh, as we take a look at the radar, for some reason, we're getting a break right here in the precipitation right there, as you can see. But we do have a few light showers out there that lightning strike indicating yeah maybe a rumble of thunder will be possible for west central in specifically northwest montana this morning so our outlook for today nothing severe nothing strong as most of these are coming through during the morning and this is the most stable time of day limited heating creates a stable atmosphere so not a lot of energy out there to really create some thunderstorms but we do have that chance to see some maybe a shower again primarily this morning with clearing skies this afternoon. So let's time out the weekend here. Future track satellite and radar showing those showers already popping up a little bit out there. Notice they could linger. We'll say 830, maybe even 9 a.m. And then after that, everything slides east. We get clearing skies, sunshine, warm 80s, low 90s for today. After today, we really begin to heat it up. High pressure is going to build in. Hot weather, mid upper 90s Saturday and Sunday across western Montana. The one thing we may see are some hazy skies return. Everything right now or all of our smoke is just really determined on the wind direction because the biggest fires here in Idaho and in Washington. So it looks like under high pressure, we'll get some winds out of the southwest, which could bring some of those uh, some of the smoke from fires just to the south of us back into western Montana. So that'll be the one thing we're looking at this weekend. Other than that, very hot weather continues. 90 today in Missoula, 98 Saturday and Sunday. 90s continue then through next week. Uh, Kalispell can't rule out a shower or a thunderstorm this morning. Then 90 Saturday, Sunday and upper 80s and lower 90s into next week. Hamilton, we have 86 on your Friday, 95 Saturday, Sunday and temperatures remain in the low 90s on Monday. Montana's largest electric utility is proposing big additions to its power supply resources, including the construction of a new gas-fired power plant in Laurel. But as MTN's Mike Dennison reports, Northwestern Energy's proposals already are facing plenty of scrutiny and criticism, especially the gas-fired plant. Northwestern has been saying for many months it needs more of its own power resources to supply its 380,000 Montana electric customers. And in May, it asked the State Public Service Commission to approve a three-part proposal, a long-term contract for 100 megawatts of hydropower from a Canadian firm, 50 megawatts of battery storage, and a 175-megawatt natural gas-fired power plant to be constructed in Laurel. Northwestern Vice President John Hines says the plan is the first step toward dealing with growing demand for electricity in Montana and the region. It's a source that's been taken for granted for a lot of years because we've had a surplus of generation in the West. But with the retirement of a lot of thermal generation and the growth of just number of people, I would call it a critical problem that has to be addressed. Hines says the net increased cost of the plan for Northwestern customers is close to zero. But critics say they're not convinced the company chose the lowest cost option from a group of bids and that Northwestern isn't providing enough information on the alternatives it rejected. We're saying, what were the assumptions that Northwestern was using to come to this requirement in the first place? They're saying we need so much capacity. Well, what were they actually looking at? Trunell represents a group advocating for more renewable power and less consumption. Hines says the company used an independent consultant to devise its power proposals to best meet the needs of customers and the company. But Trinell's client and others wonder if Northwestern may have stacked the deck to choose the more profitable natural gas plant. The cities of Bozeman, Helena, and Missoula, which want to move toward exclusive use of renewable power, also are not happy with Northwestern's choice of a gas-fired plant. They say locking in a fossil fuel burning plant for 30 years is bad for the environment and consumers' pocketbooks. Technology is advancing at such a rate that uh, we're convinced that renewables will be uh, the preferred option under any scenario within a decade. Uh, and certainly within three decades, it'll clean the clock of, of uh, natural gas or any other uh, fuel burning, uh, fossil fuel burning resource. Hines notes that Northwestern already gets two thirds of its power from renewable sources better than many other utilities nationwide. No, we're, we're proud of that. Like I said earlier, that's a significant change from where we were 
10 years ago and certainly where the rest of the country is right now. The case before the PSC will involve many months of testimony, hearings, and deliberation before a final decision is made, probably next year. And another case involving the renewable power debate and the three cities is on the horizon. We'll talk about that on Monday. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Bozeman, Helena, and Missoula are proposing to have 100% net renewable power consumption by 2030 for consumers in their metro areas. And Montana This Morning will continue right after the break and after you enjoy this picture. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Last week, a storm hit Missoula and destroyed several tents at the temporary outdoor space along Highway 93. The community came through by donating 30 tents. Now, while those tents are no longer needed, no new tents, officials are asking for electrolyte fortified drinks as it's brutally hot out there. Uh, those drinks include things like Gatorade. They have plenty of water, but you can make arrangements to donate other drinks by calling that number on the screen, 802-4309. Another milestone was reached last night as we continue to fight our way out of the pandemic. After a year off, the Scripps National Spelling Bee returned, this time not in Washington, D.C., but in Buena Vista, Florida, at Disney's Wide World of Sports. First Lady Jill Biden was among those in attendance. COVID restrictions were in place as the spellers did what they do best. In the end, 14-year-old Zelia Avant-Garde from New Orleans had a chance to win if she spelled the word Maria correctly. Maria. It tells you she's on the right track, though. Wait, uh, what is the language origin? It's formed in Latin from a Swedish name. Maria. M U R R A Y A. That is correct. <laughs> All right, she got it, Lewis. How about that, huh? Oh, my goodness. See, Mike, this is why I never do a sweat. There's no E in Muria, and I would put like a couple E's, maybe an I in there, switch around. No, these kids are so impressive. It's so fun to watch. Now, Muria is a type of Asiatic or Australian tree, and I know you knew that. I did, yes. Uh, Avant Garde is the first African American winner of the Spelling Bee, which is sponsored by our parent company, Scripps. And she takes home fifty thousand dollars. It should be a hundred thousand dollars. You know? Yeah. Oh my goodness, Mike! <laughs> I've because I I watch. I grew up watching the spelling bee. Like it was always so much fun. It was on ESPN and. Ever since I was younger, like I would try to like close my eyes and spell the words. Never got <laughs> close. So skilled, and it's always so much fun to like hear them like like look, write it down, and then get it. So congrats! So, what a I, good I quit watching it because it made me too nervous. Exactly. I mean, I, the pressure they're under. Oh, all yeah. of them. What a great job. Oh so. yeah, for sure. All right, Lewis. Thanks. Well, Montana this morning. We'll continue after the break with our top stories. We hope you stick around for that. But first, we want to take a look from Long Beach. California. What's going on? Kind of a dreary day starting out there as well. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. It is coming up not quite to 6 a.m. on this Friday. So glad you're with us on Montana This Morning. I'm Mike Powers along with Lewis Dorch. And, you know, I hate to make corrections. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, what is the mic? <laughs> What did I get wrong that, this time? No. <laughs> that was Long Beach, New York, not Long Beach, uh, California, oh, in the live shot. Oh, gotcha, So gotcha. for transparency's sake, I want to get that correct. No, I, I saw the ocean there, like Long Beach, <laughs> like Close and, enough. I mean, sort of close, right? <laughs> no. Oh, Mike, any plans for the weekend? You going to get out and do anything? I or? guess you could. I'm going on vacation. Oh, oh, that's right, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. I'm going to visit the family in New Mexico, so very much looking forward to that. Very good, Mike. Yeah. Whatever plans you may all have, out there for this weekend. It's going to be hot. It's going to be dry. And we've been really just pushing this point. But if you're going to be out, the biggest thing is just camping, fires, anything like yep. that. You want to make sure they're completely out. And I know you all have heard this uh, many times, but just going to keep hammering this point home because Mike, if something starts, there's no systems in the and the forecast to put, uh, put any of them out. Right, and we, we make mistakes. We're not thinking straight all the time, no. but you got to just you have to button down. Yeah, okay, we got to buckle down. Yeah, do what one. do they say with the fire? If you when you go to drown it out, if it's still too hot to handle, like continue to pour yep. water on it. So just really keep that in mind because we're going to see very hot, very dry weather continue. Mike, we're going to be pushing 100 again. Okay, the, uh, many areas across all Western right. Montana this weekend. So those details as we move through 
throughout the morning here. A few thunderstorms possible this morning, a few rain showers as well as again a weak systems moving through. But after this does roll through, we'll see the sunshine make a return by this afternoon as high pressure builds hot dry this weekend, looking at some smoky and hazy skies this weekend too. So again, all the details throughout the last hour of Montana this morning, 61 by 80 AM in Missoula, 79 by noon, 90 by 5 PM. You can see just we'll see decreasing clouds throughout the day today. Same setup for Kalispell as we start the day in the 60s and we'll end the day there with sunshine and highs in the upper 80s. Hamilton, Southwest Montana, a bit drier this morning, but still a few clouds before we see the clearing skies and sunshine. All the details on your weekend forecast coming up. Well, let's start with our fire watch here. The thunderstorms that moved across western Montana Wednesday sparked numerous fires, especially in the Lolo National Forest. What they're calling now the West Lolo Complex fire is burning near Superior and Plains. A type one incident management team took over last night as the fire grew to 220 acres. Air resources, smoke jumpers and ground crews are already working the fire. Managers say they expect even more blazes to emerge in the coming days because of the hot weather and drying fuels. The western portion of the forest, which includes the Superior and Plains Thompson Falls Ranger districts, experienced the most lightning activity. Now these fires are burning in steep and rugged terrain with no evacuations in place or significant structures threatened right now. But that wasn't the case necessarily on Tuesday. That's when a fire on Missoula's Waterworks Hill spread fast before it was knocked down. It caused MTN's Geneva Zoltek to wonder what evacuation may have looked like if the fire had grown out of control. When a wildfire sparks near Missoula, a combination of aviation equipment, ground crews, and fire trucks are all accessible to help quickly control it. And when it comes to wildfires in Montana, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. When disaster strikes, residents should be ready to respond, but there isn't a playbook. You know, wildfire isn't exactly like a, it's like, it's not like a tsunami, you know, right? Or like a, like a hurricane. You can't just like get to higher ground and in Missoula County, evacuations and the subsequent safety routes depend on the behavior of a fire, which can change at a moment's notice. We're pretty hesitant to have a specific plan for areas because you just don't know where that fire is going to travel to and how the winds might shift. There's a two-stage evacuation procedure in the county, warnings, then orders, and sometimes swiftly moving fires prompt an evacuation order without a warning first. And you're better off using um, that real-time knowledge of this is what it's doing right now, and then using those decisions to notify the public of what's the safest way to get out at that time. There's a few things you can do to prepare for the possibility of a wildfire. Sign up for alerts at smart911.com and create a safety profile. This is a free service to enhance emergency preparedness. Prepare a go bag with things you may need for up to 72 hours and put it in your vehicle. Park your vehicle in a direction that's facing your evacuation route. If there's only one way out in your neighborhood, plan ahead and leave early. Self-evacuation is the best way to ensure safety for you and your family. In Missoula, Geneva Zoltek, MTN News. To stay up to date and learn more about wildfires in your area, visit us at kpax.com. And you can also download the KPAX apps to stay ahead of Montana wildfires anytime, anywhere. See everything available to you on our website at kpax.com slash apps. Hamilton residents are being invited to roll up their sleeves and help out as the city updates its comprehensive plan over the next year. Hamilton's current comprehensive plan was completed in 2015, and there's been a lot of changes since, especially when it comes to growth and planning for the growth to come, as well as providing affordable housing. Other points to be considered in a new plan are traffic, community vision and values, and future opportunities. The city has a new website, envisionhamilton.com, which provides background information, ways to get involved in planning process, and tag a map and share photos. So there's going to be a variety of different engagement opportunities from the digital side on the website, but also a lot of in-person engagement opportunities as well. So next week kind of is the, is the kickoff week. We're having a series of coffee talks on the 14th and 15th around town that people can just show up at or RSVP for, and that's all through the website. But there's going to be plenty of opportunities throughout the next year to, to get out there and make your voice heard. 
There's a questionnaire on the website that asks residents about their visions and values as the planning process gets underway. And now several people are assessing storm damage left behind when Tropical Storm Elsa moved through the northeast Florida and southeast Georgia areas on Wednesday. Check this out. Impacts from the storm included multiple tornadoes, including <laughs> one in Jacksonville that brought down a handful of trees and left behind damage and a trail of debris. Wow. Preliminarily, wow. this was an EF1 tornado, but you can just see things flying all over the place. Yeah, first. look at that debris flying all over and you can see it spinning like you get the tornado because you can actually just see it kind of spinning and circling circles as well. That's impressive video right there, Mike. It just looks like buildings, signs, trees all coming down with this as it's rolled through. Uh, Mike, what we're going to see as far as the weather goes, uh, we're going to see Elsa continue to kind of make its track up the northeast here. So it's just off the coast. It looks like over here towards Maryland, but what it's going to do is continue to slide northeast and you can see maybe even move through the Boston area for today as well. It's still containing that tropical storm force winds. We're getting around 50 miles per hour, so it's actually kept its strength pretty good even as it made landfall a lot of rain, but as we know, other stuff that can happen, like we just saw even some tornadoes and strong storms with that heavy rain. So that's what's happening for folks on the East Coast. For us, as we know, it's hot, it's dry. We have some of that smoke and haze. This picture sent into us by Debbie. This was taken yesterday, the sunset down in the Bitterroot Valley. Beautiful photo. Like I mentioned, if there's anything good, anything at all good that we can say about the smoke and haze, it gives some nice sunrises and sunsets. And that's about it. We could see that smoke and haze, as we know, just continue with uh, how hot and dry it is out there. A few showers on the radar this morning. We can see some of those in west central and northwest Montana. Once these clear out, notice behind it, we got a lot of sunshine as high pressure builds for the weekend. So let's time out your Friday here. Let's go to Superior. Good morning to all you waking up and watching in Superior. Can't rule out maybe an isolated rain shower, maybe a rumble of thunder this morning, and then generally clearing skies for the remainder of the day. Same setup for St. Ignatius. Good morning to all you watching in St. Ignatius. Maybe a thunderstorm this morning, some clouds overhead, clearing skies in for the remainder of your Friday. So the jet stream forecast is going to kind of give us an idea of what to expect over the next couple days. A little dip in the jet stream today, allowing that weak system to move through, also keeping temperatures in the 80s to low 90s. So still above average, but not quite as hot as what we will see this weekend. Let's watch what happens Saturday, Sunday. This big ridge of high pressure builds in. Temperatures quickly warm up, and that looks to be the case then as we move into next week. So the seven-day forecast for Missoula, we have 90 today, 98 Saturday, Sunday, and those 90s continue into next week. Kalispell 87 on your Friday, 93 Saturday, Sunday and 88 Monday and Tuesday. Hamilton 86 on your Friday here before we warm it right back up with middle 90s into the weekend. All right, Lewis, thank you. Well, a man in Rochester, Minnesota is selling a massive collection of Wheaties boxes. Dale Hayes says he's been collecting Wheaties for about 40 years. He estimates he has somewhere between 300 and 400 boxes. He's asking for $300 on Facebook Marketplace. I thought he might be able to get more than that. He says it would be great for anyone who owns a sports bar or is thinking of opening one up. He says he's selling the boxes because he's getting older and nobody in his family wants to keep collecting them. Come on. His favorite boxes are the older ones, like the ones featuring Chris Everett and Johnny Bench. His wife also said he's eaten a lot of Wheaties in his time. Should be a healthy guy, right? All right, coming up next on Montana This Morning, we'll check in with Brian and Chris over at Z100. Stick around for that. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. It is time now for the Friday edition of Z100 with Brian and Chris. Good morning, you guys. Good well, morning. Good morning What's to up, guys? you all. How's it it's, going? It's going. You know, it's going good. We we all all made it to a Friday here. Yes. And we're all looking forward to the weekend. And one of the things that I've noticed around that's happening here in our lovely state of Montana is it's that time of peak season where we have a lot of people from out of state that are here. Oh, for sure. Yes, a lot of people drive. A lot of people driving around that don't really know how we drive around here in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing a lot of red and blue lights pulling uh, some people over, and when I do, I'm like, oh, looking for the license plate. What are, What do they got? Where are they I, from? I, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, welcome to Montana. How My you doing? My eyes, spies, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, and the the interesting thing is, is when uh, we because we have a, a fairly high speed limit here in Montana, right? Eighty oh, miles yeah. an hour on the interstates and stuff. And when you're going eighty, and you see somebody just zipping past you right. at like ninety, and you're or I'm guessing that's how fast they're going, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, Washington plates or something, and then you see them get pulled over. You're like, yeah, we we do have speed limits here, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know <laughs> if you guys know that or not. So uh, Brian and I were talking about this uh, just recently, and we were asking the question: uh, Do you remember? your very first speeding ticket if you have ever gotten a speeding ticket and that's today's mm. burning question mm. well i've been lucky and i've never had a speeding ticket now i'll probably yeah. get one but <laughs> i've been lucky because the two vehicles that i have owned was i had an old 1965 chevy truck where if it went above 60 miles per hour it started <laughs> to shake so that was the one and then my other car is i have a 2001 silver Honda Odyssey minivan and none of those scream speed and so yeah. I have not ever had a speeding <laughs> ticket thank goodness uh, few and far between but the first one I think was back in the day shall I say okay. uh, and, and this, this was when during the energy crisis and you guys might remember this where they had a national speed limit on the interstate of 55 miles an hour yeah. right okay yes. and so I got a ticket I think it was coming back from the Bozeman area somewhere in there and it was, I think they called it a conservation ticket, oh. where it didn't go on your record, and I think it might have been like a dollar fine. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, so there's a little history for folks right there. Interesting. Uh, it, I think they abusing fossil fuels or something like that yeah, too. Exactly. Resources exactly. or something yeah. is what they called that. Yeah, because right? there, yeah. the, there was the the you know gas uh, gasoline was yeah. in short supply, all of that stuff. So. Right. right. Well, here's I the deal. Uh, yeah. I'm boring. I'm re uh, reasonable and prudent. I <laughs> am knock on wood. I've never gotten a never gotten a speeding ticket. So nice. I, not to say that I haven't gone a little bit over the speed limit occasionally. Right. Right. Uh, you know. But never never gotten busted and. Yeah, I know. Now I'm going to be, I'm going to be a target. So I was like, I should have answered this question because it's happened in that. But once again, minivans and older exactly. Subarus don't li lend themselves to going fast. Exactly. I'm telling you. Oh, you can get a speeding ticket in a van. I can prove that. <laughs> 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 yeah. When I was a wee lad, my dad had an old Ford Ford panel van that he had me put a set of headers, which are an exhaust system improvement on the van. And oh. we hadn't put the rest of the exhaust system on it yet, so I took them out uncapped, and I put my foot in it. Unfortunately, there was a police officer going the other direction on it, and he heard it, and uh, man, I just pulled over when I saw him hang a Yui because I knew he was going to pull me over. I couldn't have been doing over 35 miles an hour because it was an old van, but I could not convince him of that fact. So I got an exhibition of speed ticket. Uh, exhibition of speed. Oh, I hadn't heard of that one. Yeah, and it was, yeah. a, you know, I mean, I was not doing, you know, they wouldn't do over 35, 40 miles an hour. Exactly. It didn't sound like it. Yeah. Uh, with that being said, be safe traveling this weekend, yeah. my friends. It's also Motorcycle Day. Keep your eyes out for them. Have a great weekend. We'll check in with you guys on Monday. All see right. Guys. All right, see Fantastic. You. Take care. All right, we'll be back with more Montana this morning right after this very short time out. Stay with us. Oh, here's Long Beach, California. We got to it by gully. I believe that's the Queen Mary. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Lewis Dorch. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Montana this morning. Seeing a little haze out there this morning as we're waking up at Hamilton. You can see some hazy skies here in the background. Now, not quite as bad as what we were looking at yesterday, but we are still looking at some smoke and haze moving in from those fires that are burning in Idaho. So current air quality, again, not as bad as what we were seeing yesterday morning. Right now, our air quality is depending on the wind direction. If we get the winds blowing from Idaho, from Washington, those are where the bigger fires are, then you're going to see that poor air quality. The wind direction kind of helping us out today, more of a northwest flow. So even though some of that could move in, we do our thing and it's going to be a bit better than what we were looking at, especially during the morning yesterday. However, by the weekend, we're going to get high pressure winds could shift back from to the southwest and we could bring in some more smoke and haze during that time frame. So just kind of keep that in mind that the air quality right now is most of that smoke is coming in from those fires in Idaho and eastern Washington. Over the past two weeks, hot out there, as we know, right? Well above average. So just how many days have we seen temperatures in the 90s? Well, for Missoula, 12 straight days of at least 90 degree weather now. The record? 
20 straight days set back in 1904. So we're getting close to that record and we have a good chance of breaking it. It looks like if we can kind of move through today, if we even want to break that record, right? Average for this time of year, 83. So we're at 12 straight days right now. We're going to go with exactly 90 today. So it's going to be dependent on if we hit that 90 degree mark today, because then look at moving forward through the weekend and in the next week, temperatures are expected to stay well into the 90s. So one of those records that, hey, we may not want to break, but it looks like we do have a chance of see, uh, breaking that as this very hot weather pattern continues. 90 today in Missoula, 98 Saturday, Sunday. Temperatures remain in the 90s and through next week. Kalispell, maybe a thunderstorm this morning, a rain shower. 90s Saturday, Sunday, upper 80s to lower 90s by Monday. Hamilton, 86 on your Friday here. 95 then Saturday. Sunday and 91 will be that high temperature on Monday. Well, the city of Missoula is quickly moving forward to construct and open a third courtroom by a January deadline imposed by the legislature. Montana law now requires an election for all municipal court judges, ending Missoula's practice of having one elected judge anoint or rather appoint two part-time judges. According to our media partners at the Missoula Current, the legislature reserved no funding to cover expenses, leaving the city to fund the cost of courtroom design, construction and operation, along with the election of the new judges. Still, the city took the first step on Wednesday, approving a courtroom design contract. Well, now, many people are thinking of building a new home to avoid the bidding wars for existing homes this year. But that's not always a solution, as consumer reporter John Matarese explains, so you don't waste your money. We've been hearing about soaring home prices for months now, so some buyers are thinking of having a home built instead, but that may no longer be an affordable option. Frustrated with trying to find an existing home, Clayton Martis decided to hire a builder. Yeah, we thought we'd build, you know, give it about a year, we'll take time. It's working for him, but not for Jason Reeves, who just has a lot filled with dirt and weeds. There's gonna be a walkout on the left-hand side down here. That was supposed to become his family's dream home. And the final contract was finalized on March 25th. But just as this bulldozer arrived to start work, his builder had some bad news. And they asked us for $75,000 more dollars to build our house. In this neighborhood of $600,000 homes. Why? Soaring lumber prices that have nearly doubled this year. This is happening to more and more families this year who are having a home built. You agree upon a price, sign the contract, builder says everything's great, and then he says we're going to need a lot more money. Jason and his wife are now backing out of the deal, but the builder wants to keep $17,000 of their deposit. An attorney for the builder told us 12,000 is for architectural plans, which the Reeves get to keep, and 5,000 is for administrative costs outlined in the contract. Jason has hired a lawyer of his own to plan his next steps. But this is a caution to anyone building a home right now. Be prepared for price increases, possibly major price increases. My wife is heartbroken. I take it a little better than she does. Yeah, for her, it's just a nightmare. If you're signing a building contract, make sure you know whether the price is locked in or can escalate so you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris, MTN News. And coming up, a follow-up to a story we brought you yesterday about a sinking boat when Montana This Morning continues. And here's a live look over Missoula. Kind of Purple Mountain's majesty there a little bit, isn't it? Time is 623 and our temperature is 61 degrees. Well, yesterday we told you about a thunderstorm over Canyon Ferry Lake near Helena that sank a boat, leaving six people stranded in the water. MTN Sam Hoyle has an update on how they were able to get out safely. Yesterday here at Canyon Ferry Lake, MTN reported that a boat sank during a storm and all six passengers of the vessel were able to swim to safely. That unfortunately was not the case. The bright side of this situation, it was a helping hand that got five of those people out of the water. Joe Cardenas, a resident of the lake for five years, was notified by one of his neighbors that something was wrong and immediately he sprang into action. I got up and got the binoculars and yeah, there's just the point of a boat sticking up uh, out of the water with a guy hanging on to it. The one I saw first was the guy on the bow of the boat, and he was just hanging on. I don't think he had a life jacket or anything. So, um, you know, obviously he was pretty frightened, and uh, I wasn't sure exactly how we were going to make it work, but 
we were able to get him on the boat and then he immediately said there's more people over there and he pointed them out and they were probably 100 yards away another group Cardenas said though the storm had passed, the water was extremely tough to navigate as he tried to get five of the six members of the vessel out of the water. And both Mitchell, a former sheriff's deputy in the Billings area, and Cardenas, who was an active duty Navy pilot for over a decade, said it's a miracle that no one was lost. The three of them anyway probably wouldn't have made it if Joe hadn't got out and got them. Probably given the circumstances, as good of, a, good of an ending as you could have hoped for. And so I'm really happy for that. We have already had one tragedy on the lake this year. Uh, we don't need to have any more. As you can see behind me, the boat that sank yesterday is actually being lifted up out of the water by a barge. We are not entirely sure who owns the boat and where those people are, but we will update the story with any information that we have online. Reporting from Canyon Ferry Lake, Sam Hoyle, MTN News. All right, let's head over to the Weather Center now in Lewis Darch. All right, yes, to keep it safe if you're out there on the water this weekend is it's going to be hot again. Many of you are going to be looking or continuing to look for some places to cool off. We have 80s and low 90s today, upper 90s pushing 100 in many areas Saturday and then again on Sunday. So we'll get those details throughout the morning. But first, let's do our city of the day. Move in a little bit closer to see where we're going on this Friday. We'll head down into the Bitterroot Valley here and we'll head to Darby this morning. Good morning to all you waking up and watching in Darby. We got a nice day ahead of us. Maybe a few clouds this morning, then clearing skies, sunshine and mid to upper 80s by the afternoon. Here's some other temperatures across western Montana today. 90s for Troy, Libby, Trout Creek, Thompson Falls, 80s for Whitefish, West Glacier, Swan Lake, pushing 90 in Polson, 90 in Missoula, mid to upper 80s and down through the Bitterroot Valley. Like I mentioned, high pressure brings very hot weather this weekend. Those details along with your local news headlines coming up just after the break. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Coming up on 630, our final half an hour of this Friday and of the week. And we're glad you joined us for that. I'm Mike Powers, and we've got uh, quite a bit of interesting stuff to fill out the show with, so stay with us for that. Hopefully you will do that, in fact. But right now we want to go over to our, uh, our the main man on the weather, and that's Louis Dortch. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. You know what? I was yeah. making an observation here this morning because when you work so early, you get accustomed to, like, you, uh, look outside, you see the sun rises, <laughs> yeah. when they're happening, how dark it is, everything. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to see how fast, like, the days just start to shorten up. And I was noticing that this morning when I was looking at all of our eye cams. I'm like, oh, wait, it's still dark. Oh, wait, it's still dark out there. Now the sun's coming up now, but man, it's taking a little bit longer to get that sunrise. It was Mike. nice when that sun would just pop up and we could use those cameras all morning yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. And then now you have me a little bit depressed over the summer's going away. Well, already. you know what this means, Mike? Winter's right around the corner. Right <laughs> Today, around the winter corner. sounds pretty good. Oh, I know. Actually, I think a lot of us would take maybe not winter, no, but a fall. Fall. fall maybe get a little snow out there in the mountains i don't know but yeah mike it's hot it's dry as we know this continues through the weekend we're gonna be pushing 100 again this All weekend right. so right. this very hot and dry weather pattern is going to continue for us here our forecast headlines look like this can't rule out a few rain showers maybe a few thunderstorms this morning and then what we're going to see is clearing skies during the afternoon with a lot of sunshine for today. Now, hot and dry this weekend, like we talked about. And then we could even see that smoke and haze stick around this weekend, too. It's not as bad this morning as what we saw yesterday, but we will still see it uh, really develop. It looks like potentially under high pressure Saturday and Sunday. So all the details as we move throughout the rest of the morning here. Can't rule out a thunderstorm this morning in Missoula. Then we'll see sunshine and push in 90 by the afternoon. Same setup for Kalispell here. Start the day off in the 60s and the day in the upper 80s. Hamilton will see some clouds this morning, then clearing skies for the remainder of your Friday. All the details coming up. Missoula officials are asking for the public's input on how to reduce the number of people camping illegally in town. It's a problem they say that has grown out of the housing crunch and from COVID-19, which forced shelters to accept fewer people. MTN's Katie Miller continues our coverage. Doing nothing is uh, not an option. As Missoula's homeless population continues to grow, city and county leaders say they'll soon enforce trespassing laws and stop allowing people to camp illegally. 
we are endeavoring here to make uh, order out of out of chaos. On Thursday, Missoula Mayor John Ingen and the Missoula County Commissioners heard recommendations for shelter plans for Missoula's homeless. Our hope here is to provide people with alternatives, offer them an alternative place to live that is legal, safe, secure, and then let them know they can no longer camp illegally where they are. The Office of Emergency Management says it surveyed 21 different site locations and has narrowed it down to three recommendations. The resources on site will vary depending on how close the people staying there are to attaining permanent housing. There is no single site that is suited to address the needs of the current or expected unsheltered population. Option one, use the former Sleepy Inn for temporary transitional housing. Option two, construct a clean camping spot at the end of Clark Fork Lane. Option three, design a hard-sided outdoor shelter near the cemetery on North Russell. Mayor Ingen says he knows future decisions might be controversial. We'll do uh, outreach to, uh, to neighbors with regard to whatever decisions we, uh, we uh, settle on. Um, and uh, and do our best to mitigate um, impacts and unintended consequences. In Missoula, Katie Miller, MTN News. Now is the time to reach out to the city and county with questions and public comment. You can email solutions and ideas to missoulacounty.us. Missoula leaders say the most recent numbers show 400 people experiencing homelessness, but some anecdotal estimates place that number as high as 1,000. The issue has seen strong reaction with the removal of people who were camping illegally on the West Broadway Island just a few weeks ago. The thunderstorms that moved across western Montana Wednesday sparked a number of fires, especially in the Lolo National Forest. The West Lolo Complex fire is burning near Superior and Plains. A Type 1 incident management team took over last night as the fire grew to more than 220 acres. Air resources, smoke jumpers and ground crews are already working this fire. Managers say they expect even more fires to emerge in the coming days. The western portion of the forest, including the Superior and Plains-Thompson Falls Ranger Districts, experienced the most lightning activity.